Hello everyone, my name is Tammy Lake and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer. Welcome to today's video where we'll be looking at how you can use our products to automate the Create Materials SAP business process. We'll start by discussing our customers' top 10 material management use cases. Next, we'll demonstrate the Mass Create Materials use case from both the business user and author's perspectives. Then we'll discuss potential savings by looking at a sample analysis of actual desktop customers' 2020 material management usage data. We'll also show where starter templates can be found, and we'll end with a summary of what we've discussed. Let's get started. Our desktop products can help automate many different materials management-related SAP business processes. This is the list of the top 10. Today, we will be specifically looking at an MM01 Create Material example. It's important to note, creating materials is only one of thousands of potential SAP processes our desktop products can help automate across the SAP landscape. The SAP Materials Management module is just the beginning. As we go through the demos, imagine using the same process to automate other business processes in areas such as procure to pay, record to report, supply chain maintenance, human resources, quality management, new product introductions, and so on. Our products can help automate business processes involving both master and transactional data. For example, in one year, our desktop customers used our products to automate 4,000 different SAP transactions. To create or update data in SAP, you may be required to open many different screens for each record. Imagine being able to create or update that same data in one Excel sheet using your SAP credentials. Now, take those time savings and add on the ability to create or update multiple records from the same Excel sheet. The time savings exponentially increases. On top of that, Imagine being able to look up valid SAP data and validate the entire file before uploading to SAP. With Excel templates, business users see only the fields required for the current business process. Business authors create SAP data upload and download scripts using our desktop products. Business runners use those scripts to interact with SAP for data uploads using transaction scripts, data extracts, using query scripts, and SAP BAPIs using scripts created with Direct. The scripts are published inside Excel templates where business runners can access them from a drop-down menu. In today's video, we'll see examples of how business runners interact with transaction scripts in Excel and an example of how a business author creates a transaction script. In our first demo, we're going to see the SAP interactions from the business runner's perspective. We'll use Excel to enter data from multiple screens in SAP required for the new material data creation business process, and then upload the data live to SAP from one Excel sheet. During the process, we'll look up valid SAP values, validate the data before we try to upload, show how errors are reported and reprocessed, and finally, upload data to SAP. Let's see it in action. With Studio, business users interact with SAP directly in Excel using the Studio add-in. So if we go to the Studio ribbon, you can see we're logged onto Studio as well as SAP. Users can log off of one SAP system and log on to as many SAP systems as they need to interact with. Also, they can access, upload, and download scripts from the dropdown. So in today's example, we're going to look at an upload script called MM01. We're going to create some materials. If we look down here in our data template, we've started entering our data from the MM01 screen. Now, every change in color represents a different screen in SAP. So you can see basic data one, basic data two, etc. And you'll notice that in those screens, we don't have every field. And that's because for this particular business process, we may not need every field. We've only got the fields on there that are relevant for this particular particular business process. In addition, we can actually look up values directly in SAP or we can use custom allowed values as well. So first of all, let's look at the ABC indicator column. I can choose any cell in this column and then come up on the ribbon and click on look up values. That's going to bring up an SAP menu that are going to show me the valued values for that particular column. So for example, here's my ABC indicator and I can choose a value here or I could have manually typed it in either way. So I'm just gonna drag that down and make them all see. I'm gonna put a, an error in here so you can see what happens when there's an error. 
Also over here in our MRP controller, we've got a limited list of allowed values. I'm going to choose lookup values. These are still valid SAP values, but I've made my list shorter to only accept values for this particular business process. So I'm going to click on a different one, click on OK. If there's data in there, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite and say yes. And then I'm going to go ahead, same thing here, I'm going to put in an error to show you what happens when there's an error. Now I've got all my data in. But before I put it in SAP, I want to do what's called validate. So I'm going to check the data against SAP, but I'm not going to write to SAP. So I've got some log columns here and I'm going to click this validate button. And that's going to look and let me know if the data looks OK or if there are any errors in the data. So as you can see, we built in a couple errors and it is reporting on the line where the errors are. So let's take a look at those. The first one says the following cells contain invalid input values. And that is in cell V10 and it must be in the list. So if I go over here to V10, I can do my lookup again, or if I can see I have an extra one in there, so I'll get rid of that guy, press enter. Same thing with the second one, ABC indicator is where the issue is. So let me scroll over to my ABC indicator. Oops, made a mistake there. Let me fix that. As you can imagine, you may have thousands of records in this Excel sheet, but you may only have a handful of errors. So now I can just say, instead of validating everything, let me just validate those error rows. So I'm going to click on validate only error rows, and it's only going to look at those two cells. And hopefully it will come back with a green success message to let me know that the messages have been resolved and they have. So I have a success. Now all of my records look good and I'm ready to post to SAP. So I'm going to go ahead and click run now. When I click run, you can watch the status bar appear and it tells you what it's doing. So the first thing it's doing is it's reading the data and then it's writing out the material numbers created. So we just successfully created nine materials. And if you look up in here, you can see the SAP system, the user who ran the script, also the date and the time. And we created nine records in nine seconds. And if you can only imagine if you use the MM01 screen, how long it would take you to manually create all of these records and all of the different screens you would have to touch in SAP. Let's see what's next. Now let's look at it from the business author's perspective. Transaction scripts are created by recording the screens, fields, and buttons used in an SAP transaction, mapping the fields to Excel, and then running the script in Excel to interact with SAP. Let's see it in action. In the runner demo, we saw that we have several different scripts available in the dropdown on the ribbon in Excel. So what does it take to create one of these? Let's look at the MM01 for an example. Those SAP uploaded download scripts are created using our Windshuttle suite of products. So if I go to new and I can see I can do transaction query or direct. For this example, we're going to record an SAP transaction and then create from SAP recording. The first thing that we need to do is log into SAP if you're not already logged in. So log in. And then we tell it which transaction we want to record, MM01 for example. And we are going to map to Excel, then we'll click Start Recording. The first thing it does is check your authorization to make sure that you are authorized to use MM01 in SAP, and then it starts the recording. So it brings up SAP, and then you just enter the data as if you were entering it manually. So I'll enter some data in a few fields. I want to start with a blank slate, so I'm just going to click deselect all and then click on my first screen. Start typing in some information here. And as you go through the recording, you are required to make sure that you fill in all required fields. In addition to required fields, you can also populate any fields that are required for the business case. So I don't have to fill in everything. I can just fill in a few fields here. Then I can go to my next tab. And as you can see, we can move back and forth between different tabs in SAP and fill in some data. And I'll just fill in a few more fields. When I'm finished entering my data, I'm going to press Enter. 
and then it will ask me if I want to save and I'm going to say yes. Once you save it, it knows that the recording is complete and it creates a mapper. So these are all of the fields that I touched in SAP as well as the information that I entered into the screen. At this point, I can do a couple things. So remember we saw the run log and the validate log in the earlier demo. That information is going to come from SAP. So I'm dragging it down and just, for example, want to put that in A and B. And then all of the other information, I can select multiple things at once and drag them all up at the same time. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna tell it what column in Excel I wanna map to. So I can highlight all of them just by clicking on the first one, use my shift key, click on the last one. And I wanna start on column C, for example, and it will automatically go left to right. Or if I want to restore the mapping, I could also do one at a time. So I can do, go ahead and do the logs. Let's say I want the material number first, then the material description, and so on and so forth. I can just keep dragging down. And for the rest of these, I'm just gonna drag them all up. and then it will auto-populate. So you can do a hybrid of both. You can also put fixed values in. So for example, this is a checkbox and it always needs to be an X. So I can make that a fixed value upload. Over here, you can put in Excel formulas. Then you can also limit your allowed values and you can also make fields that are required in the business process that aren't required in SAP. If they are required in SAP, you don't have to mark those as required. So now we've got our script up here. Then we've got our Excel file down here and we've mapped and we just save both files. And I'll just leave the generic default names. And if we want to do a test, we're ready to do a run and I need to put a, a material number that's not in SAP yet. So let me change that. And I can do a test right here from, from my studio. So I can do validate and just check it and see if it's correct. This doesn't write to SAP. Looks like a success there. And then I can even do a test in a non-production system during in development. And I'm going to test it. Click on OK. And I can actually run it and see if I can create the material as well. So now I've tested it, I've validated that the data is correct, and I can of course play with my Excel file and adjust my columns and, and make them wide and add headers in there or whatever I want, or I can even map to an existing Excel file. But now I'm done and ready to go and ready to run it in Excel. As you can imagine, having the ability to mass upload data versus manually entering data into multiple SAP screens can result in significant time savings. This table shows a sample of the total records uploaded and days saved for materials management transactions used by our desktop customers for the year 2020. When you factor additional value added from the business user's perspective for things such as extracting data live from SAP, already in the format required, being able to look up and limit allowed values from within Excel, and validating the data against SAP before uploading, as well as from a business author's perspective, for things such as being able to create an SAP interaction script without requiring technical programming knowledge, the value our products offer is so much more than just data entry time saved. We've seen demos using our products to automate creating SAP materials and briefly discuss other material management transactions. However, there are still a lot of automation possibilities relating to material management, such as change materials, goods movement, inventory management, source lists, purchasing info records, and much more. If you want to take the business process automation to the next level, we also offer the ability to centrally administer, schedule, and execute processes using our Studio Manager and Evolve products. With our Evolve product, customers also have the ability to create workflows to automatically route Excel files and web forms to multiple participants for data collection, review, or approval. Automated routing can be conditional and or tasks can be assigned to individual users or multiple users at the same time. 
use our workflows with user-friendly web forms with built-in business process rules instead of Excel to automatically assign business process tasks to workflow participants at the right time using role-based views designed with them in mind. Workflow automation also provides full process status visibility for both current as well as completed workflows for all workflow participants. The community site was created for our customers to find and share examples of Excel templates and starter scripts, tap into in-value expertise of other Windshuttle users across the industry, geography, and SAP business processes, access online training, and show off your SAP and Windshuttle expertise by earning badges for contributing to the community.